Good morning. A few announcements before we start. Um, first of all, we are going to be decorating after Thanksgiving, either that Friday or Saturday, and we need um, some help. The property committee is meeting on Monday night, so we will decide on what day and what time we're going to be needing that help, and it will be in the heartbeat. Um, no, actually, we'll get, I'll send an email out because the heartbeat won't come out before then. So hopefully, um, if you're around after Thanksgiving and feel like being in the decorating spirit, you can come and help us out with that as well. Um, Christmas dinner is fast approaching. We're still needing uh, volunteers to bring salads and uh, Christmas goodies or donate the $15 if you don't feel like baking. We do still need um, many of the gifts to be purchased and that list is on the um, boards right outside the doorway here. Um, even if you're not able to make it, you can drop your gifts off, it off at any time and we can uh, make sure that we get them to where they're supposed to be in, in time for the dinner. Um, also, if you're starting your Christmas shopping or finishing up your Christmas shopping, remember that our church cookbooks and our passage jars always make great gifts, and they help to support the church as well. So those are available as well. Um, if there's anything that you want to get into the heartbeat, that should be in the office by Tuesday of this week. Um, I am having surgery the day before Thanksgiving, so Joe and I are trying to get things done a little bit ahead of time so that we can get things out on time. And then um, next Saturday at 1 o'clock, if you have nothing going on and want to see something really spectacular, our little school, our Odyssey school in the building, is doing a business fair. And the, the seven kids from, I think Harrison is kindergarten or first grade, um, up to I think the oldest is in fourth grade, about that age. Um, they're doing a business fair. They're creating a product, and then they've got all these, um, they've made all these promotional pieces to promote their product and then they're going to have this fair. So those seven and then there are six other kids it sounds like from uh, the FM area that are coming as well and they're setting up in the wrecks and they're going to try to sell their products and, and promote their products and all that kind of stuff. So I would love it if we could, um, if we could fill the place with um, people to see their products. They're so proud of it. They, every day they come over and they're like, come on, Pastor Michelle, you gotta see this, you gotta see this. They actually had somebody come in and they built their own stands to put their items on to showcase them. One has built his own website to sell his products online. You know, I mean, it's just crazy. So one o'clock next Saturday, if you're available, come on out and see that in the church. And then um, you'll see in your bulletin, there is a little, piece of paper called Caring Closet Needs. Just like we did um, for the Academy uh, Pantry when Joanne did that wonderful Thriving Grant, all of the Moorhead um, schools have started to pair up or trying to pair up with local churches. So in other words, the church that is closest to them. So I received a phone call and have been in conversation with the social workers from Propesfield and Hopkins, the one right across the street and then Propesfield just down the street a block. They are also in dire need of, um, of items as well. And you'll see this is the list, and this is not just going to be a November, December thing. We're going to try to keep going and helping them to fill their closet, uh, or yeah, fill their closet all year long during the school year. Um, the items that they have on the food item bottom pieces, they have a fridge and freezer, like they have meat, but they'd like to get things that they can pair together so they can send home an entire meal, not just pieces of meals and that kind of stuff. So these are the items that are smaller. There are some bigger items that we're going to actually put on a Christmas giving tree, um, uh, jackets and winter boots and that kind of stuff. So you'll see that tree out there once we start decorating for Christmas. But these are the sm smaller items. And we'll use the wooden box just like we did for the pantry. But if you can start uh, collecting these when you go to the grocery store, pick up an extra bottle of laundry detergent or an extra shampoo and conditioner or something like that so we can start filling their, their closet as well. I do have a slideshow that I will show next Sunday as well to kind of help us promote that. And then finally, it's Stewardship Sunday. So as we are doing our uh, communion today, you will be able to bring up your stewardship card and put it into the little red box. As you do that, um, Arlen's going to come up and talk about it in a few minutes and share with you that if you forgot your card, we've got extras. Good morning. So my name is Arlen Swenson. 
been a member here since 1992. 32 years, married right here at this altar, three boys baptized at this altar, three boys confirmed here. My wife Carla, member since she was seven years old. Served on the church council, um, a number of different capacities, served as a president as we built our new addition to the north. A um, number of different committees, but never stewardship committee. Stewardship committee, and I was reading a little bit in this book by Charles Lane. It's called Ask, Bank, Tell. And it says, oh, you got on the stewardship committee. You drew the short straw. And it kind of seems, seems that it is that way, but really stewardship is about all of us. Stewardship, one of the um, definitions is supervising or taking care of something, meaning we take care of our beautiful facility, take care of each other, take care of the world around us, whether it be by the food that we give to uh, the homeless or serving those that are not able to be here uh, in person. But we have, all we have is a gift from God. Um, the, the amazing things that happen in this church go on forever. It's the, the Welka, the quilters, janitors for Jesus. We've got a new roof. We've got a new HVAC system. And thank you, each and every one of you. That's all part of what the stewardship is. is not the building necessarily, but it's the people in this building that make this church. We're welcoming new members as we go forward. Go on and on about that. It's, it is about the people. We are nearing the end. Well, today is the day that we ask, and if you haven't received one of these cards, we have some out at the Welcome Center. But we ask that you prayerfully consider what you can do to help our campaign as we turn in our pledge cards for our church council. Our budget is around $370,000, but there's numerous other things coming forward too that we ask that you consider. We're gonna need some rug replacement. We're gonna need some out exterior work. But whether you can give of your time, your treasure, your talents, whatever helps. And it's important that you turn in a card, whether you, at this point in your life, are saying, I can't really give very much, whatever that might be. Even if it's a zero right now and you give as you can when you attend, please turn in a card because it certainly helps our church council figure out where we are going to be for the next budget year. And just know that um, 1 Peter 4.10 said, each of you should use wh whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I thank you for letting me talk to you today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, and by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen one robed in majesty and mercy. We confess that sin has taken hold of us and we are complicit in its power. We are disturbed in spirit and our hearts cannot rest. Unbind us and set us free. Lead us again to the waters of rebirth that we may live just and generous lives for the good of your world and the care of our neighbors following in the servant way of Jesus. Amen. These words are trustworthy and true. Christ bore our sins once for all on the cross, swallowing up death forever. For his sake you are forgiven, and God remembers your sin no more. Let your heart be glad and again rejoice in your salvation. Amen. Our gathering song, we praise you, O God.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. the peace from above and for all and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord this is the feast victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood Together, let us say the prayer of the day. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our readings for the morning. Good morning. Today's first reading is a continuation of Daniel's visions for the end of time and speaks of the Archangel Michael protecting the, uh, the people of Israel. Verse 2 also gives us the first biblical reference to the bodily resurrection of both those that will be saved and those that will be lost. Daniel 12, 1 through 3. At the time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as has not happened from the beginning of the nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to the righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Psalm number 16 is actually a Masonic psalm, which is later quoted by both Paul and Peter as they talk about Jesus' resurrection in the New Testament. 
Also early in Psalm, Davis reminds us, as he had written, that we always seek counsel before we do something. Don't do what we want to do and then hope that we get blessed. Please read responsibly with me Psalm 16. Keep me safe, O oh my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with your joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. The second reading today is from Hebrews 10. And if you remember, Hebrews is when the early Christian faith was starting to break down, and many of those that were of the Jewish faith were returning to the Jewish faith. Here, Christ's work was being contrasted with the work of the Jewish priests, who, of course, would have to do sacrifices every day because there were sins every day. And it explained that if these people who were early Christians went back to their Jewish faith, it implied that Christ's death and resurrection wasn't enough, denying Christ's actual significance. Hebrews 10, 11 through 14, and 19 through 25. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope he, we profess, and for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up on meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Word of God, word of life. gospel comes to us this morning according to Mark 13, verses 1 through 8. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? Replied Jesus, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when will these, hap these things happen, and what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. 
When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gospel passage takes place with Jesus and the disciples visiting a new temple in Jerusalem. Well, new, it's about 30 years old, but in those days that would have been new. This temple is one of the great builder King Herod, the great's temple. He's built it, and it is quite the temple. He's built it to impress his Jewish constituents provide himself with some real fame by the extravagance of its beauty and its construction. Herod had spared nothing. The temple was built with massive, massive blocks of limestone. Smallest stones were probably two to three tons, and largest weighing probably hundreds of tons. And remember, they didn't have cranes and tractors like we have today. They would have been moved around by oxen and men, no mortar would have even needed to be used because the weight of the stones would have held them in place alone. The disciples couldn't help but marvel at these impressive stones and construction of the temple in awe, and therefore their comment, look what massive stones seemed appropriate. The doors of the temple were magnificent solid gold panels that faced the east and reflected the sun. It would have blinded anyone who looked at that direction, the sunlight, and therefore it was just a magnificent building. The gold, the weight of the stones, what really could be more assuring and certain for the disciples and compelling for them to point out and tell Jesus, look! And yet he surprises them and he replies, do you see these buildings? Not one stone will be standing upon another. They'll all be destroyed, every one of them. And the mount that they stood on, and the temple, its temple, temple itself, they're all extremely impressive. They all seemed immovable and everlasting, and yet, in just a few years after Mark writes this gospel, the Roman Empire would descend upon Jerusalem and completely destroy it, just as Jesus foretells. Nothing will remain but a pile of rubble. And it never will be rebuilt, that temple. In fact, there's a Muslim mosque standing in the exact same place today. This is just one more story that the disciples struggle with believing and understanding. This exchange takes place in the final week of Jesus' life. Just a few days prior, Jesus had ridden into Jerusalem on a donkey to his people cheering him on, waving palms in his honor. The temple is the center of the Jewish religion, and they just can't imagine that it could ever be destroyed. And Jesus had just observed the widow put all of her money, her two copper coins, into the treasury, her sacrifice and gift, and noted how she had given her everything. He denounced the hypocrisy of the wealthy, and their parading around in their fancy robes, needing to be treated with honor, and making long-winded prayers simply for the sake of appearance. And now he's mocking the temple itself. Jesus is outraged at the uncaring and hypocritical attitude of the religious hierarchy that has grown so arrogant and so greedy. They've lost their way and corrupted the purity of devotion to God and failed the greatest commandments, love God with all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself. It was this disgust that had led Jesus to overturn the tables of the money counters and the livestock sellers who were overcharging and ripping people off. He wanted to cleanse the temple of all that corruption. Our gospel goes on to tell us later that Jesus talks to them on the Mount of Olives about when all of this is going to happen. When is the temple going to fall and all of these horrible things going to take place? And Jesus replies that they should not be fooled or led down the wrong path by others claiming to be him. We know that there have been and will continue to be those who seem to predict the end of time. We see it on TV and on, on magazines, you know, end of time will be this date or that date. Remember how much panic we all went into 
when the year 2000 was upon us and we were so afraid that everything was going to crash when the clock turned midnight on the year 2000. It is tempting. It is tempting to cling to anything or anyone that promises a foothold at times when we feel everything is out of control. And Jesus is attempting to point that out. There will those who come and look and sound like they have all the answers, but do not be led astray. Jesus says even he doesn't know when the end of time is going to happen. In fact, there are many things that will take place first. Earthquakes, famines, wars, the list goes on and on and on. But wait, we've already had earthquakes. We've already had famines. We've already had wars since Jesus ascended. Of course we have, and does that mean we should be afraid? No, as long as we remain on the right path. If we continue to live our lives in relation with Jesus, we have nothing to fear. Jesus is always with us and will guide us in the right direction. He's not talking about an ending to scare us, but rather a beginning, a birthing of a new life, a movement towards wholeness and fullness and completion. This is a gospel of hope and opportunities and possibilities. Sure, we can indeed worry at times about our future, but as in our times of worry, that's when Jesus is with us the most. We all need him. We are God's children through our trust in Jesus Christ. And no one can ever take that away from us as long as we continue to walk and live every day with him. Amen. At this time, we'll sing our hymn of the day and take our morning offering. Let us pray for all people of God. Each petition will end with merciful God and your responses. Receive our prayer. Let us pray. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. 
O oh God, in the washing of water, you set us free from the power of sin and death. Unite all the baptized in the covenant you have made with us as we strive for your justice and peace in all of the earth. Merciful God, with the selfless power, you protect all who take refuge in you. As nations rise against nations, defend all who are displaced or affected by war or violence. Empower all people and nations to pursue peace. Merciful God, in your presence you give fullness and joy. Care for all for whom joy feels distant. Be present with persons experiencing depression, anxiety, addiction, or mental illness. Be with those that we now name silently in our own hearts as well. Bring them healing and wholeness. Merciful God, through the years you have gathered your church in this community for worship, fellowship, formation, and service. Enable us to look beyond the walls of our building to perceive where you are calling us forward. Merciful God, we offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Let us prepare for the meal. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heavens, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and he said, this is the new covenant of my blood. It was given and it was shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us sing the prayer that Jesus taught us.
Behold, God is making all things new. Take your place in the new creation. Once again, as you process forward, there will be a red box in the center for you to place your pledge card if you brought it with this morning. I need uh, Skip and Arlen to come on up and help.
faithful God, you have spread before us a feast of rich food and drink in the body and blood of your Son. We lift before you and, prayer, and pray over the gifts that have been given as the well towards the stewardship of this church. Now send us out to labor with you in service to the world you have made and among the people you have made your home. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. At this time, we'll sing our blessing. As we give Joe a few minutes to get back over to the organ, you're good. Our sending song is Jesus Still Lead On. <laughs> <laughs> 